<clears throat> okay, so week 16, radioactive decay. This is the second lesson on um, radioactive decay. The first lesson was on uh, um, calculating half-life and using the table, and this lesson is on nuclear equations. So your keywords, particle decay, emit. You've got your three questions there relating back to the first lesson. So what are the three types of radiation? Define radioactive decay, define half-life. And then we've got a challenge question on working out the half-life using that table. So press pause if you want and attempt these questions. And here are the answers. So I'm gonna I'm aiming to make this video very short, so I'm gonna just briefly go through these. You can always press pause if you're getting stuck somewhere. What are the three types of radiation? You've got alpha, beta, gamma. This lesson we're going to be dealing with alpha and beta because these are the particle decays. Gamma is a um, high energy wave. Alpha is two protons, two neutrons. As you will see, beta is a fast moving electron. Define radioactive decay. Common question in an exam. When you've got unstable nucleus or an un unstable nuclei, which is many nucleus, they're going to give out either alpha or beta particles and they're going to turn into new elements. And that is essentially what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing that in the form of nuclear equations. Another big one, define half-life. Half-life is the time taken for a radioisotope's mass to decay by half. And we're going to leave it to mass for now until we get through the year. Because then it could be changing to a couple of other things. But for now, the time it takes for a radioisotope's mass to decay by half. Here's your challenge. It says there, it's got a half-life of 700 years. Calculate the time taken for the activity to fall to an eighth. So we've got NHL, number of half-lives. We've got time, which is the half-life, how long it takes to decay. Activity, mass, or percentage for your amp. And then we always start with zero, zero there. This goes up in ones. Your time will go up in the amount of... Uh, time that it decays so if, it, if it's got a half-life of 700 years in this case but there it's going to go 700 then another 700 then another 700 and that can go on and on and on until we reach our destination really and then your um, fraction is always going to start with one over one or if it was a percentage it was always start with 100% because you've got 100 percent of something at the start and then it decays by half so then it goes to a half then it decays to another half, which turns into a quarter, so half or half is a quarter, and then we get to an eighth. So you can see that the answer here, how long does it take? It's going to take 2,100 years. We're going to be producing um, balanced nuclear equations for radioactive decay in this lesson, and this is linked with your GCSE physics for double award. I said earlier, I'm aiming to keep this video very short, very short compared to the other videos, which sometimes are 30, 40 minutes long. This could easily turn into 30, 40 minutes, but I'm going to aim for that sort of 10 minute mark. Radioactive decay, that second question, when unstable nucleus give out uh, alpha or beta particles, they turn into a new element. I just want to highlight you, you've got, you start with a, with a radioactive element. It's going to get rid of a, in this case, this is an alpha decay because it's got two blues, two yellows, two protons, two neutrons. And it's going to, because it's lost some of its neutrons and protons, it's going to actually turn into a new element here. And we can focus more now on alpha and beta. I find once you've done the equations, this makes a lot more sense. So I'm kind of going to glance over this. I'm not going to go into too much depth. But we can see that it says alpha there is, is two protons, two neutrons. That's what it releases. So essentially, it's a helium nucleus. And it shows you um, plutonium. So just to recap on your mass number, your mass number gives you your number of protons and neutrons, plus neutrons. Your atomic number, the small number, gives you the number of protons. Well, if plutonium is going to re uh, release two protons and two neutrons, you can see that its mass number decreases by four. But more importantly, its 
atomic number decreases by two because two protons are released. So it, it turns from element 94 in the periodic table to element 92 in the periodic table. I'll just show you uh, the same sort of thing with beta decay now. Uh, beta decay is a fast moving electron, so it actually loses a, an electron. This gets a bit more complicated in terms of um, when it comes to charge, because you will see now, in the case of beta decay, the mass numbers stay the same because no neutrons are getting lost, no protons are getting lost. So you can see that the the atomic uh, the mass number stays the same. But the atomic number increases in the case of um, electron decay because of the charge. Um, and we won't go into that, but it goes from 55 to 56, or increases by one. So the last one decreased by two, this one decreases by one. Like I said, this will become clearer as we start practicing the nuclear equations. Just a, a bit of a recap then. the the on um, the structure of an atom, you can see that we've got the electrons on the outside in the nucleus, the neutrons and the protons. So when we're dealing with radioactive decay, it's really coming from the, from the, the nucleus. Even in beta decay, um, it, it stems from the nucleus. We're, we're not sort of gaining or losing electrons really from our outer orbit. Um, th that is for A-level, but... Um, when we look at the periodic table, um, we're dealing with the heavier elements because the heavier elements generally are more unstable. You can see with the lighter elements like magnesium, uh, atomic numbers and mass numbers, they usually double. Okay, You can usually see from, you know, if we look at carbon as well, carbon has got 6 to 12, um, aluminum 13 to 27, silicon 14 to 28 usually about double, okay? But as you get to the heavier elements, you can see uh, we've got 109 to 268, okay? So it's way more than double um, because there's a lot more neutrons, a lot more neutrons in these elements, making them heavier, making them more unstable. Uh, I'm gonna skip through that. So um, I just wanna show you now how to balance these equations. Now I haven't put a success criteria because I do think this, this is going to be quite easy once you see what I'm doing. And that is the, the thing with these equations. They are quite easy. It's key, key stage three maths, really. Um, but the equation looks high. You know, when you look at the equation, you think, oh, what is that? And a lot of this is skipped. When, when you look at the data from other schools in the exams, this is a, these are questions that are often skipped in exams because they just look a little bit nasty. But let's have a look what's going on here. So we've got um, thorium. Um, here and it's got a mass number of 232 and it's got a, a atomic number of 90 so it's the 90th element in the periodic table then we've got an arrow so which means you know uh, just like um, an the equation for photosynthesis um, it, you know it loves something something arrow something something and in the case of photosynthesis it's going to be um, carbon dioxide plus water is going to give you that arrow is going to give you uh, oxygen plus your, your glucose well, this is very similar, okay? Thorium, the radioactive element, is gonna give you radium. I think it's radium, isn't it? Yeah, or radon, could be, right. I'm not sure. Radium or radon, one of those. Uh, plus your, and th this is your mass number of four, your atomic number of two, so this is your alpha decay. Sometimes you'll see a H uh, CHE, sometimes you'll see a little alpha sign which looks like this. Okay, oh, that's terrible. A little sort of alpha sign. It's like a little fish, if you, if you will. Here he is, look, happy, swimming away. Um, so whenever you see a four and a two, it's alpha decay. But I'm telling you here that it's alpha. You're never going to be expected to come up with the element yourself because there's no periodic table in a physics exam. So what we're really looking to do is to balance this equation. So I'm just going to draw a line here through the arrow. So everything this side has got to equal everything that side. And if you switched on, you will probably see now that radon or radium, whatever that is, 
something plus four. So, so something plus four has got to give me 232. What plus four gives me 232? You could also look at it as 232 minus four, which is going to be 228. Is that balanced? 228 plus 4 is going to give me 232. Hopefully you can see that, that everything this side has got to equal everything that side. And I'm just doing the top line or the top, we can say the, the mass numbers for now. What about this one? So I've got 90 on this side, so I need something plus 2 to make 90. Or 90 minus 2 is going to give me 88. And that really is as easy as it is these these uh, equations let's try another one where it's slightly different because now if i draw a line there you can see that we don't know what's happening this side but we have got some numbers this side so everything this side has got to equal everything that side 208 plus 4 is going to give me 212 so i guess i think this is bismuth 212 is going to give me 208 plus 4. That makes sense. And then I've got the atomic numbers here. 81 plus 2 is, is equal to this. So what is 81 plus 2? It's 83. So bismuth is the 83rd element in the periodic table. Okay, there's nothing else to it. That is it. Okay, the only thing that I would say with, with these, sometimes you're going to see this as 4, 2, and an alpha particle. That's the only other way you'll see it. You can see that they're all in co This is what they've got all in common. And I've circled that up ready because you, you might get to... So these are the harder ones. You've got 2, 3, 4 plus something is going to give me something. So you now need to know that this helium nucleus... I'm pointing there, you can't see it. This helium nucleus, this alpha decay in a sense, is releasing two neutrons, two protons. So 2 plus 2 is 4, because the mass number gives you the number of protons and the neutrons. So this is going to be 4. So it's got 2, 3, 4 plus 4 is going to give me 2, 3, 8. On this side, 2, 3, 8. And then we've got 92 equals is the same as something plus 2. So that's going to be 90, isn't it? I think that's thorium. So thorium is the 90th element in the periodic table. So that's alpha decay. And um, I don't think there's anything too challenging about that. That is sort of just simple maths. No calculator required. Um, let's move on to beta decay. And then we'll do some practice. So beta decay now, remember I said um, it, it's sort of that atomic number increases by one. And we'll, we'll have a look. So we got copper here. We got mass number 64. And uh, it's the 29th element in the periodic table. So something plus minus. So let's do the top number first. So let's start with the top. So 64 on this side. Everything this side now has got to be the same as this side. Well, something plus zero has got to equal 64. 64. This doesn't change. 64 plus zero gives me 64. 64 plus zero equals 64. How about this side now? Something plus minus 1 is going to give me 29. Well, from key stage RAS, you will know that a plus minus 1 is really minus 1. So something minus 1 is going to give me 29. It's 30. And it increases by 1. See how it's gone from 29 to 30 now? And we saw that example back when I was showing what uh, beta decay was. So 30 minus 1 is 29. Let's go down to this example now. I'm going to start speeding up on these. This is going to equal 10 my, uh, plus 0. So that's going to be 10. It's going to remain the same for beta decay. 5 minus 1 is going to be 4. Let's go to the last one now, the more challenging one. Um, Something plus zero is going to give me 125. So because it's beta decay, the mass number remains the same. Um, and then 52 plus minus one, which is 52 minus one, is going to give me 51. 
let's have some practice on this. So I would like you to press pause. Um, I've even given you, I've even told you that this is going to be alpha decay here and this is going to be beta decay here. Have a little practice, see how you're going. I'll show you the answers and then I'll set the assignment. Okay, so I'm just going to concentrate on the alpha at the first of all. I'm going to go to the first one, which is. Um, so I'm just going to run through these very quickly. 220 plus 4 is going to give me 224 on the bottom. 86 plus 2 is going to give me 88. There's the next one. I'm just going to show these now. See if you're getting them right. That was for alpha. Go through the first one for beta. 25, so something plus 0 is going to equal 25, so it's 25. Something plus minus 1 is going to give me 11, so 12 minus 1 is going to give me 11. Here's the answers there. So if you're not getting these at the moment, go back, watch what I was doing. You can also have a look as well on YouTube yourself. They're called nuclear equations, balancing nuclear equations. Maybe there's uh, someone out there that shows the method a little bit different from me. But, you know, I've got to be honest, this method, there's, you're not really going to come up with a better success criteria than balancing on either side. Here's your assignment then. I'm, um, I'm going to ask you to choose one of these because you don't want to be doing pages and pages full of these. It's all about practice throughout the year. So I would... Um, I'd recommend maybe trying one from level one before you push on to level two and, and so forth. I wouldn't just go straight for the challenge. I would try um, a few because they don't take long. Um, but yeah, your, your level one's fairly easy. Your level two's slightly more challenging. And then your level three there wants you to write the full equation. And um, I'm going to leave it there. Good luck. And I will see most of you on... Uh, well, on next week, on Monday, so good luck.